the Proverbs 31 Who's this woman of valor? In this book, Ruth is presented as a destitute Moabite who followed her mother-in-law back to Jewish Bethlehem. Once there, her daily work involved gleaning for barley and wheat. For over three chapters, she is neither a wife nor a mother. Her life looked nothing like the life of the woman depicted in Proverbs 31. Ruth didn't spend her days exchanging fine linens with merchants, running a home full of servants or buying fields. Instead, she worked all day in the sun, gleaning leftovers from other people's fields, which was a provision made for the poorest of the poor in Israel. And yet Boaz says of Ruth in chapter 311, All the assembly of my people know that you are an Eshachayil, Ruth 311 NRSV. Ruth is a woman of valor, not because she checked off the Proverbs 31 domestic goddess list, but because she lived her life with resourcefulness, compassion, courage, wisdom, and strength. In other words, she lived her life with valor. In the book of Ruth, Boaz is identified as Jibar Shayil, a man of valor. So when Boaz uses Eshachayil of Ruth, he clearly sees her as his equal. The Proverbs woman is not defined by her husband or her children, particularly sons, as many other women in the Hebrew Bible are. Rather, this woman is someone who is motivated, and she is defined by a string of verbs such as seeks, rises, buys, provides and makes. We are also not given much in the way of the woman's appearance. Normally, unless they are judges or prophets, women are described in the Hebrew Bible by their physical attributes such as beauty or gracefulness. Not here though, we have no clue as to her weight, height, shape, or clothes. Is she beautiful? Is she built like a tank? We will never know, and it doesn't matter. So how does this woman of valor have relevance for us today as both women and as church people? What message does she bring to a world where women are bombarded with messages about aging, body shape and beauty? On Working Preacher, Professor Amy Oden suggests that this passage offers a radical counter-cultural message in the profound silence about what she looks like. The closing verse reminds us that beauty is vain, not something women, or men, hear anywhere in the daily visual assault of airbrushed female bodies on billboards, magazine stands, and pop-up ads. The silence of Proverbs 31 on appearance is striking, and refreshing. She is praised for the content of her character and the excellence of her endeavors rather than the surface of her skin. Odin also sees the subversive nature of the Proverbs woman as a tangible expression of Lady Wisdom, who we met last week. Odin says the woman's virtue and worth are a result of her own agency, her actions, and choices, she leads her own life rather than following someone else's. She pursues her own ends rather than obeying orders. There is no hint that her industry is not her own, that she is demure or deferential, or that her pursuits are directed by others. In other words, the woman of valor is as independent as Lady Wisdom, as clear on what her pursuits and her purposes are. Like Lady Wisdom, she is also operating in the male domain of buying and selling, and things occurring outside of the household. When we see Proverbs 31 in the larger context of the book of Proverbs and the wisdom literature, and in the more immediate context of Lady Wisdom, the woman of Proverbs 31 could be understood not as an actual flesh and blood woman but as the ideal of Lady Wisdom herself. Indeed, several verses pick up some of earlier depictions of Lady Wisdom in Proverbs, for example, she is far more precious than jewels, v10, opens her mouth with wisdom, 1 colon 20-21, 24, 31 colon 26, both are strong, 814 with 31 colon 17, 25, and both laugh at the time to come, 31 colon 25, CF 126. The words Eshachayil, the woman of valor, is used by modern Jewish women as a way of cheering each other along. The say it to one another when they are celebrating things such as promotions, pregnancies, divorces, and battles with cancer. It is the Jewish equivalent of saying you go girl or acknowledging someone is wearing the Wonder Woman tights. In fact, Wonder Woman, on Israeli TV, is known as Eshachayil. According to this Jewish practice, being a woman of valor isn't about what you do, but how you do it. 
Surely this is the message to us today, men and women. This isn't about being a dutiful wife excelling in housewifery, though that is okay if you do it with valor. It isn't about how we look, or about meeting the expectations of others on how we look. It is about how we do things, our motivations, our faith, and our inner qualities. If you if you are retired, do it with valor. If you are a nurse, be a nurse of valor. If you are a CEO, a pastor, a checkout chick, mountain climber, or a barista at Cafe Guru, if you are rich or poor, single or married do it all with valor. And if you are a Christian, a person of faith, be countercultural, speak out about the superficiality of much of our society, show courage when facing injustice and support the equality of women.